everyone. On behalf of Invest Barbados, the National Investment Promotion Agency of the Government of Barbados, welcome to our webinar designed to provide a glimpse into our blue economy and the tourism and hospitality sector. My name is Renata Mohammed, and I'm the Director of Investment and Marketing. And it is our hope that our guided exploration will reveal to you a better appreciation of the activities within these sectors and investment opportunities for our collective benefit. We appreciate that our audience today is diverse and global. And as such, before we zoom into the sectors, pun absolutely intended, we'd like to provide you with a brief country overview. A reminder that Barbados is also a destination to live, work, play, and invest. To provide that overview and a very warm welcome, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the CEO of Invest Barbados, Ms. Kay Ann Brathwith. CEO. Thank you very much, Renata, and good morning and welcome to a webinar designed to bring focus to the investment opportunities within Barbados' blue economy and the tourism sector. Our speakers promise to dive, and as Renata said, pun intended, into the topic further. But given our diverse global audience today, it is my pleasure to provide you with an overview of Barbados and what we bring to the table beyond our beaches. Despite the myriad of challenges posed by the pan pandemic, let me note that Barbados as an island has been determined, has determined not to let a good crisis go to waste. For us, this time of trial has been an opportunity to pivot, to strategize towards the diver diversification of our economy and to be our, our innovative best. Introducing, for example, the first 12-month visa to allow digital nomads to live and work from paradise minus tax implications. I therefore immediately invite you to consider and where applicable, reconsider Barbados as a place to live full-time or part-time, work, play, invest, expand, export to, and grow. I assure you that a warm and welcoming investment climate awaits. Barbados is very much open for business, as Renata alluded to. Recently ranked second for competitiveness among the Latin America and Caribbean countries by Global Financial Centers Index, Barbados remains a resilient financial center. Out of 114 countries, including a range of vast regions, Barbados ranked 64th overall. Ranking was based on business environment, human capital, infrastructure, financial sector development, and reputation. I share this achievement to note that we have built and maintained a solid foundation for you, underpinned by transparency and compliance, and manned by a highly educated workforce. We remain well regulated, and while we appreciate the value of our tourism sector, and I note there are immediate opportunities for tourism investment, global business is the business of Barbados. Barbados has a long history of financial services with over 4,000 financial service companies, 40 double taxation agreements, and nine bilateral investment treaties. Additionally, Barbados cut its corporation taxes from 25% to, range, to a range of 1% to 5.5%. Tax allowances for manufacturing and research and development reduces those tax rates further. At this time, these are some of the lowest corporation taxes anywhere in the world. Our personal income tax rates are also competitive. If you are considering the establishment of a business in Barbados, know that you will be joining an expanding roster of global entities on the island. Indeed, several investors and international agencies choose Barbados as the hub for their operations in the Caribbean and as a gateway to Latin America. Above all else, know that here you will always find an excellent quality of life. Allow me to excite you further with mention of some of the other investment opportunities that abound from the traditional to the emerging. 
committed to the diversification of our economy, we have been promoting our productive sectors globally. These include areas such as insurance, wealth management, financial services, information communication technology, renewable energy, and niche manufacturing, just to name a few. The majority of these sectors generally withstood the shocks of the pandemic and registered increased demand, particularly insurance, information communication technology, and niche manufacturing sectors. Agriculture is also a sector that has experienced substantive growth recently. As such, an investment opportunities in this sector are ripe for the picking, including areas like high-tech food production, agro-processing, as well as farming geared towards local and regional food security, among others. Note also that for a little island, we have big scope as related to knowledge base and high value niche sectors, such as medical tourism and global education. And if you wish to embrace Barbados as your second home for you or your business or both, be assured that no restrictions exist on the purchase of commercial or residential real estate represented a further opportunity for non-national investors among us. If you're a member of our diaspora, consider the opportunities mentioned as well as investment opportunities through the government securities via our stock exchange and the Central Bank of Barbados, investments through our credit unions and a range of registered charities and foundations on the island. I will leave it to the experts though to share more about our blue economy and tourism sector. But I underscore that an investment in that sector is a noble investment in our collective future. What I've shared is but a sampling of what Barbados has to offer. If you welcome personalized insights and guidance, our team at Invest Barbados is available to be your guides from point of interest to investment and growth. Let's grow together. We are here to collectively ensure that Barbados works for you. If anything mentioned today piques your interest or you already know how Barbados can fit into your plan, let's talk, stay connected. I thank you. And thank you very much, CEO Brathwaite. The message was absolutely clear. There is so much to discover in Barbados beyond the beaches. However, for now, let's, let's pause there. Let's pause at the beaches. President of Barbados, Her Excellency Sandra Mason, is quoted as saying, and I quote, that the mar maritime space over which Barbados has jurisdiction is 400 times greater than that of our land space, equating that to exciting untapped possibilities for the sustainable exploitation of our marine environment." Unquote. Today, Mr. Ricardo Ward, Climate Change Coordinator, Blue Economy, in the Ministry of Environment and Natural, National Beautification, takes us on a virtual dive into that very special economy. Mr. Ward, all yours. Now, I, I see his lips are moving, so I know he's talking to us, but here is that we've heard it so much over the last two years. Sir, I think you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, uh, Not thanks, a problem. Uh, I was so riveted to uh, Kay's presentation and to yours as well that I guess I, I forgot that, that my mic was muted. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, good morning to some and good afternoon to the remainder, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure for me to offer up this uh, presentation to you uh, to underscore the kind of work that we've been doing in Barbados in terms of building out our, our blue economy. Um, let me start by sharing my screen. You can see the presentation that I've prepared for you. What I am going to talk about is uh, the economy, uh, because we have a diverse audience, of course, the economy, its meaning, and uh, linkages to sustainable development goals. The blue economy potential of the Caribbean, as uh, would have been revealed by um, studies by the IDB and also the World Bank. Um, and, and what specifically we have been doing in Barbados to build out our, our blue economy. And I'll, I'll get into that development program a little later. And hopefully, through all of this, you would realize the areas of potential uh, investment opportunity and take uh, Kay's offer up in terms of coming uh, and investing in Barbados 
uh, through her office or um, possibly even through initial contacts uh, um, with, the, with the Ministry of Environment and National Beautification. I pause a little bit there because just quite recently we were the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy, so it's a little adjustment for me still. Um, this slide just offers up um, some general characteristics of the ocean. Uh, it is tremendously important. It dominates the, the Earth's surface. Um, it, it contains the majority of the life that we have on Earth. Uh, it is fundamentally important to the regulation of our climate and very uh, important for its song management as it relates to tackling the ongoing issue of global climate change um, and biodiversity and all those other multilateral issues that the world has to contend with. And if you don't hear, you see mentions also that fisheries alone contributes over a hundred billion a year to the global economy. And that's a quote from the um, FAO, FAO back in 2014. So it's probably appreciably more than that. But what is the blue economy? Uh, the blue economy is fundamentally different to what is referred as the, the ocean economy. Um, it can be said that Barbados has had an ocean economy because uh, we have been um, using the coastal and maritime resources for quite some time. And um, by that definition of an ocean economy, that it simply deals with the use of ocean resources, we have had that. But the blue economy goes beyond that. It focuses not just on the use for economic reasons, but also um, on the sustainability concerns. Um, the, the use of resources in a manner such that um, it, the, the, the resources that you're, you're using aren't draw down, drawn down um, to, the, to the extent that they collapse. Um, there's also another term that you probably all would be aware of is the green economy. And is the, that is defined as an economy that aims to reduce environmental risk. And all of these terms um, fact into the notion of blue economy as well. They stated here that the blue economy is indeed part of the green economy. For me, they're all the same thing. Uh, they consider sustainability principles uh, that relate to uh, addressing economic concerns, um, social concerns, and environmental concerns. Um, we all, uh, most, of us, most of us, if not all of us, are aware of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, um, which provides a shared blueprint, a shared global blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet. These are the 17 um, goals listed here. And in particular, the one that we are particularly concerned with in our ministry, uh, sorry, not, we are particularly concerned with as it relates to blue economy development would be sustainable development goal number 14 that speaks to life below water. Uh, this blueprint is represented here in this graphic by the five P's of people, prosperity, planet, peace, and partnerships. And all of these factors, as you will see a little later, factor into uh, the development program that we have crafted for ourselves and how we wish to move forward uh, in moving from where we are at in terms of managing Barbados's um, coastal and maritime space um, towards one that is sustainable sustainably uh, managed. Um, this slide here presents a, a deeper dive into the, the targets defined in the sustainable de development goal number 14, life below water. Um, it speaks to issues of uh, reducing pollution, uh, protecting and restoring ecosystems, um, increasing scientific knowledge and research and technology for ocean health, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all of these, um, speaks to the long-term management and utility to be derived from access and, and, and consumption of, of coastal and maritime resources. Um, so blue economy therefore um, encompasses things such as the use of smart shipping to lessen the impacts on the environment. Uh, inclusive, it is inclusive and improves the lives of all. It's based on sustainable fisheries, it tackles pollution, it conserves marine life and the oceans and so on. So it's about uh, using the space in a, in a manner that is respectful and seeks to um, ensure its availability for long-term um, global development. 
in, in, in concert with the, the whole principle of sustainable development. This slide is with some references uh, from an IDB study that was undertaken, uh, the, re the report was generated in 2020, and it was examining opportunities in, in the blue economy uh, in Barbados, Bahamas, Guyana, Jamaica, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago. It cites that uh, the blue economy is estimated at $407 billion of 2012, but that's only for uh, the Latin American and Caribbean region. Uh, the EEZ is over six countries, it's vast and untapped. Um, it speaks our logistical position for shipping routes and islands as a haven for safe tourism, as, as you know that tourism is perhaps the mainstay of uh, Barbados and the economies of many small and developing states. Uh, uh, it has the, the intellectual property potential of mar marine biodiversity, um, an area that we haven't delve into um, up until now, or, or hopefully we'll get into it in the future. Uh, and we have multiple in institutions focused on blue economy related in initiatives, but they're currently uncoordinated. So these, this is one thing that we have to remedy um, as we move forward, if we're going to realize effective management of our maritime, coastal maritime space. Um, the, the study also went on to do a comparison between um, the, the activities in the Caribbean versus a global scan in terms of the, the various sectors or industries, those that are mature at a growth stage, those that are emergent, and those that are negligible. And you can see on the far right, um, those that are considered mature in, 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 for these six countries at least, include fishing, tourism, shipping. I, I don't know that this is necessarily exhaustive, but um, certainly is the ones that they would have examined. Um, in the growth stage, oil and gas, even at this late stage as we're considering uh, global climate change and move away from, from fossil fuels. Um, maritime monitoring and surveillance and ports. Uh, emergent issues, and here's a, a category of, um, of, of opportunities um, that you could perhaps see yourself um, examine a bit further, and quite a bit more information will come a little later on this particular area here, and also those that are negligible. Um, renewables, um, given the global trust uh, to address climate change um, through mitigation efforts, meaning um, the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, and in renewables, in the offshore, we're talking about things such as offshore wind as, as a re renewable source to, to be used to generate electricity, solar, deep, deep sea mining, uh, renewables and wave and current and, and thermal energy as well. Um, this slide is, is a summary uh, from a, a World Bank study that was done in 2016. And it looked at the Latin American and Caribbean um, islands and identified uh, the main economic sectors, uh, the ocean services uh, that are derived from the from, from use in maritime space and looked at um, the what the the, the 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 benefit that island states derive versus mainland countries in Latin American uh, constituency. Um, what I why I put this up there is to, to demonstrate that the estimate here is 407, 406.99 uh, billion US dollars in 2012, of which the island states only occupy, um, well, only contributing 53.17%, uh, sorry, billion dollars. Um, that's only a 13% share. And if you look here, you'll see that there are quite a bit of um, data gaps in terms of being able to estimate in a meaningful way um, or, or what we are deriving from these types of activities if they're indeed, in fact, uh, being undertaken. Uh, but when you can compare this 406 billion US dollars to the global um, blue economy estimate in 20, 2009, that is $24 trillion and 407 billion dollars 
is appreciably less than is 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 less than appreciably less than one percent of the global opportunity in terms of accessing uh, uh, and using the coastal marine marine area um, in, in terms of blue economy uh, development. Uh, it was mentioned earlier uh, that Barbados is maritime space is over 400 times bigger than its land space. And uh, just to give you a visual image here, uh, and to note that the land mass is 166 square miles. Uh, we've had tremendous issues with trying to manage that, um, given uh, the unique characteristics of a smaller developing state. And we are now challenged with um, trying to access and utilize this huge space. Um, some refer to it as a large um, ocean space um, that, that for us to now manage and, and access and derive the best, uh, the greatest utility from, from um, what is, is rightfully ours to access. Um, so in 2018, uh, the, the Prime Minister in her wisdom created uh, a Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Blue Economy. We are now with um, the Ministry of Environment and National Beautification, uh, but the program still goes on. Um, there's still a commitment to blue, eco blue economy development uh, uh, in Barbados. Uh, but while we were under the MMABE, the ministry, uh, we embarked on a, a development program uh, with our multilateral partners, in particular the UNDP, the IDB, and uh, the Nature Conservancy, um, to prepare a, a scoping study. Um, we have developed also a blue economy strate strategic framework and action plan. And we are in the process of launching uh, the preparation of a, a marine spatial plan, which is fundamentally important uh, in allocating the, the maritime space, um, how we're going to use it um, uh, to avoid things such as um, user conflicts, to minimize the impacts on, on coastal marine uh, biodiversity, et cetera, and, and to honor our international commitments uh, in terms of global programs that Barbados uh, would have signed on to uh, under a variety of the multilateral environmental agreements that we are a party to. Um, we've also had, independent of this, we have also had an update to the coastal zone management plan, update the fisheries regulations, and there are other things that impinge on uh, that are relevant to our blue economy de development aspirations. In particular, uh, and perhaps the most advanced one is the energy transformation program for offshore wind and other RE ops, renewable energy options are being considered, uh, particularly as this is, um, um, particularly as Barbados has communicated in its, its, its nationally determined contribution to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change that we really and truly want to phase out our, our reliance on fossil fuels by 2030. Um, there's also um, a rooster reefs um, climate investment program um, being um, developed by the uh, by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, and there are other initiatives, of course, uh, in the various departments. And you you might hear of uh, tourism master plan and so on from the the, the other presenter. Um, so in in, in creating and, and preparing this strategic framework and action plan for Barbados for blue economy development. And, and by the way, uh, this has already been uh, approved by the cabinet. Um, it came out of the IDB supported study, as I mentioned earlier. Um, this is an illustrative representation of the theory of change model that was used. Um, in other words, how do we move from the current um, sustainable development considerations, uh, the category, the, the status as to the, those categories on the e economic dimension, the human dimension, and the environmental dimension, we are, we are constrained by available capital, we are, we are constrained by uh, capacity, skills, and, and so on in terms of human dimension. And in terms of the environmental dimension, a recognition that the, the coastal, particularly the coastal environment, but the coastal maritime environment of Barbados, not just Barbados, the, the global global um, environment, uh, maritime environment, is under uh, severe threat and pressure, uh, development pressure, and therefore uh, is, is appreciably degraded. 
some more so than others. It, it identified a series of uh, enabling policy themes that will move us from this condition, the current state, towards an improved state where um, we have a sustainable blue economy that's inclusive and distributive, uh, that, that promotes inclusive and distributive economic growth within the limits of a healthy and resilient marine ecosystem. Right? And the three pillars that they're, they've advanced for us to, to, to pursue um, includes effective regulation of uh, the coastal marine environment, growth in shipping, mariculture, fisheries, and biotechnology. That's another signal, uh, but there are others, of course. Uh, other opportunities for, uh, for, for uh, investment, uh, and monitoring and reporting for international compliance and performance benchmarking and sustainable investment. And, and they have proposed these, these seven transformational um, strategies interlinked that go towards the real, realization of this improved state. Um, the one of particular import here is perhaps uh, incentivize and leverage capital for the blue economy. There's a whole a series of assumptions here as well um, that we would have to uh, pay attention to. So this pretty much uh, forms the uh, informs the, the the planning and direction and the, and the work that the the ministry will have to undertake uh, in the furtherance of the development of it of, of Barbados's blue economy. So I mentioned the overarching goal a short while ago, but the main strategy. Uh, is the creation of a policy regime aimed at economic diversification and resilience primarily using its marine, not coastal. And the reason why the consultants made reference to coast, not coastal, is because that there is the, the coastal zone has been under tremendous pressure and uh, any additional economic development is likely to cause further degradation by any such development that is not sensitive to the current condition could only make things worse. This is not to say that um, initiatives that are sustainable and supportive of um, coastal rehabilitation and so on would not be considered. Um, in particular, those would, would perhaps be encouraged. Um, things such as rebuilding coral reefs, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Um, I mentioned uh, these subsidiary goals. I didn't mention subsidiary goals, but I mentioned them uh, a short while ago. Um, in, in defining, however, the, the policy framework and strategic action plan, there was a diagnostic study that examined all the policy issues across a variety of sectors listed here in this first column and, and the potential blue economy opportunities. And this is protect, particularly the slide that I want to leave you all with. Um, in terms of water and wastewater, what are our issues? Barbados is a water scarce country, uh, and um, for future development, it's been said that uh, the future development might be constrained by the availability of the water. Um, so, you know, I, we can see uh, perhaps in the near or even longer term um, that there might be an increased demand for desalination plants. Uh, uh, and also they need to reduce wastewater contaminant loads, uh, you know, to, to help with uh, the rejuvenation of the near shore coast, coastal ecosystems, et cetera, et cetera. Solid waste in adequate collection, uh, um, reduce the marine impact due to control of plastics and non-biodegradable material. Um, a particular area of interest and import to, to, to Barbados right now uh, and perhaps the entire Caribbean and the world is marine cleanup as it relates to uh, the management of plastics and also sargasm and, and converting sargasm from being uh, uh, presently a nuisance and a waste uh, into a, a resource. Um, this is very, very high on, on our priority in terms of uh, addressing some of the challenges that we have domestically. Um, in terms of fishery, um, we know that the domestic demand exceeds uh, domestic production, and so there's appreciable room for growth in this area. Uh, I, 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 seem to, I think that the, the, the uh, management plan speaks also to, the roadmap speaks also to, to moving, uh, supporting and moving the fishery to more of an offshore fishery, more so than a, a coastal uh, 
uh, fishery um, uh, that in an effort again to provide the opportunity for coastal ecosystems to to rehab to re regenerate um, coral reefs etc and the benefits derived therefrom in, in terms of uh, minimizing coastal erosion and uh, and buffering the impacts of uh, uh, climate change from storm surge, et cetera, et cetera. Um, on the tourism, you have reference to things such as re rehabilitation of da damaged assets and diversification of product offerings. Um, in terms of energy, offshore oil and gas opportunities, I've always often had an issue with trying to reconcile, in my mind, offshore oil and gas um, as a blue economy um, concern, large because of the the harmful uh, impact that it can have on, on uh, the uh, the biodiversity of the area, but um, it is cited here, and it is an area that we are actively pursuing as well. Um, renewables, um, or tech meaning ocean te ocean thermal energy conversion. Wave on floating wind are being considered, and there's a substantial body of work already done by the Energy Division. It can be found on the um, on the Energy Division's website as to where they are in terms of moving um, towards the integration of uh, offshore energy. I I know that the locations for um, uh, offshore wind development have already been identified, even as we are uh, now about to start the the process of defining a marine spatial plan. Uh, and in maritime transport, investment in port infrastructure reforms to support investment in pool efficiencies, data exchange, and environmental safeguards, et cetera. And certainly over and above all of these, any um, new development or technological improvement that can be embraced that subscribes to the whole principles of sustainable development and offers the opportunity for development of sector, blue economy sectors are uh, areas that we could um, have a discussion on in terms of um, the economy growth um, for, for Barbados. Um, the transformation strategy seven um, listed in the in the action plan uh, speaks to incentivizing and leveraging capital for for blue economy. Um, and strategies can include in, incentivizing the diversity, a diversity of economic enterprises, excuse me, engender a reasonable taxation regime, create an attractive investment environment for investors, uh, and give assurance of maritime safety and security. And there are some examples there. I presume you'll you'll get a copy of the presentation after. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go through these in any detail, but you get a broad sense of the kinds of things that uh, that uh, we we will uh, be undertaking. Uh, and our partners invest Barbados might be um, it, instrumental in helping us fashion how we go forward with this. Um, if you're wondering about political support, well, you heard from um, or from the in the introduction about statements made by the by the president. Um, but this is drawn from a statement uh, made by the prime minister uh, in 2020, uh, which highlights uh, the 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 focus of protecting our national ecosystems. And also um, she had highlighted uh, several of the key areas uh, for further development in Barbados, including maritime logistics and transport, marine biotechnology, renewable ocean energy deployment, of, and offshore energy production and generation. Um, in terms of investment, now, now how do we do this? Uh, invest Barbados, uh, pointed out how you can gain entry for consideration, but over and above that, you need to understand that ultimately um, any proposal uh, would have to go through the appropriate uh, planning methodology described by the Town and Country Planning Development Planning Office uh, and, uh, and the other supporting regulatory agencies. There's also the opportunity for green and, and blue and or blue bonds development. Um, how how you go about that? Uh, that is, uh, the invest, invest Barbados will be in a better position to explain that to you. But uh, it is my understanding that um, 
these can be offered either by the government or uh, developed uh, independently by countries to attract investment, uh, to attract capital, uh, to support support the investment that they might want to pursue, um, uh, subject to uh, an appropriate business case, uh, as I understand it. And I will stop there for now. Uh, thank you. I hope that I have provided uh, a glimpse of, of where we are, where we'd like to go, and, and the, the importance and relevance of attracting investment and helping us to move that forward. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much, Mr. Ward, for enlightening us. Um, you know, we, we said we we're taking a dive, but it feels like we, we just skimmed the surface in terms of the amount of opportunities that exist for us within the blue sector. Now, of course, the blue economy and the tourism sector, um, you know, they, they kind of go hand in hand cohabiting as you may to potentially offer one larger package to the potential investor or of course they can stand solidly on their own with sustainability in mind at all times jacqueline pollard um, jacqueline pollard is the senior tourism officer ministry of tourism and international transport and she is with us today to provide perspectives and possibilities from within our tourism and hospitality sector. Given the impact of the pandemic on the sector globally, we are very keen for the update from Barbados. Ms. Pollard. Good afternoon, fellow colleagues, participants. Let me share my screen. A good afternoon to one and all. I am going to present in this afternoon on the Tourism Development Act. And this act is administered by the Ministry of Tourism and International Transport. It came out of the All Hotels Aids Act. It was established in 2002 to give not just hotels, but all tourism entities, be it restaurants, um, attractions, um, nightclubs that are tourism oriented, heritage um, assets, museums, and so forth. Let me go to my next screen, right. Okay, so as I said before, the Tourism Development Act was established in 2002 and it replaced the Hotels Aids Act. All Barbadians, all non nationals can apply to the ministry to um, get incentives. The Act caters to all types of tourism establishments, be it hotels, apartment hotels, villas, restaurants, tourism attractions medical tourism facilities that is relatively new. Uh, we are looking at having a, a medical tourism niche and we are doing quite well in that area so far. Tourism recreational facilities, the restoration, preservation, conservation of natural sites, museums, and sports facilities. I must say here that um, other tourism or tourism related entities that the minister deem that can be um, approved with the consent of the cabinet, he or she um, can approve that, that um, attraction as a tourism product. The Tourism Development Act is divided into three phases. The first one is the interim approval of a tourism project. The second is the final approval, and the third phase is the licensing of a tourism product. With interim approval, that gives the investor building supplies and materials. You could be renovating a building, you could be building from scratch, you could be doing an extension, refurbishment, conversion, altering the business, um, the buildings. 
So that phase gives only the mortar and brick stuff, building supplies and materials. So I should say here is that you have to be approved because if you put things into, you start your renovations without having that approval, that would be a sunk cost. You cannot regain whatever costs you put into your construction, your refurbishment. You have to wait until you are issued with the interim approval certificate and the building supplies and material certificate that you can take to um, your contractor to get the, the items free of duty, be it imported items or items bought locally from a bonded warehouse. So that is very important. We don't want you to go out there and extend yourself and purchase items and then to realize that you cannot recoup that cost. That cost is a sunk cost. You can only get the items free of duty when the approval is given for the interim approval certificate. Then the final approval, that is a gap, that is a bridge, that is a phase between to link between the um, interim approval stage and the license. At this stage, you do not get any concessions at all. At this stage is when we would go out there and make sure that if you said you're going to build a spa onto your hotel, that the spa has been completed because you cannot get um, any operational items if you are not, the project is not completed. So you must um, complete your project and it must be in line with what you are supposed to do because we um, double check, we do our checks and balances, be it with the cabinet paper that was done that would incorporate all the things that you said that you were going to do in your project. So you have to finish and get the certificate of compliance from the town and country planning department before you can go to the third stage, which is the license stage. At this stage, the operational items that are listed in the second schedule of the Tourism Development Act, I can send that to you that you will see the whole range of items and they are in subheadings. You would have a heading for hotels, you will have a heading for villas, you will have a heading for sports and recreational, you name it, whatever is under those um, headings, you'll be able to get appliances, you can get your fridges, your stove, your televisions and so forth, furnitures, um, beds, tables, chairs, your cutlery, your crockery, your glassware, cleaning machines like shampoo machines, wet and dry vacuums, golf carts. For those people who have a golf um, course, that hotel or that attraction that would need it because everyone would not get a golf cart. You have to have a golf court or, or a similar feature on property. Then you also get items for refurbishment. You can get, if you have tennis courts, a gym, a spa, you can get items for refurbishment free of duty for that. Also with our attraction zip line, you can get the safety equipment for your zip line attraction. Also life saving equipment, be it for a pool or whatever, rescue ropes, handling ascenders, those things that would keep your guests very safe. You can also get those items free of duty. And also, which is a very big um, niche and very important, especially in these times, items for persons with disabilities, because that is a getting a, to be a very significant niche market in Barbados. This caption, um, segment, there are people just like, quote, normal people. So you have to make provision for them, be it a talking elevator, signage in braille, telephone amplifiers that, you know, when they press their number on the telephone, they could hear if it is nine, four, five, six. So we have to take care of that segment. So any 
approved tourism entity would be um, eligible to get all of those things free of duty. Then there are other types of concessions that can be had via income tax at the end of the um, year, an investor can claim 150% interest paid on a loan within that income year. Also on costs incurred by marketing for your um, staff, also advertising, brochures, marketing overseas, tourism promotions and so forth. Any approved entity can get um, those um, services free, well, not free of duty, but you can claim on your um, income taxes when you are filing your corporate taxes to get those things at least 150% um, write off. Also fees, as I mentioned earlier, for staff training. If you're gonna send your staff overseas on a training course that is relevant, not just to the staff, you're looking at the um, tourism product that is vital to improve and enhance your HR um, services. You can claim for the cost of accommodation, the training institution costs, the books, equipment, the return airfare, that you can also claim on your corporate taxes when you are filing at the end of the year. In 2014, we amended the Tourism Development Act to make it a bit more relevant because from 2002 to 2014, that is 12 years, and we have in, amended the main section of the Act for instance, section 15, we have also incorporated food and beverage. Um, you can get that free of duty, but the caveat for that is that the restaurant, not a standalone restaurant, but the restaurant has to be on property of a hotel and the hotel must be running the restaurant, not you leasing out the hotel, lease out the restaurant, to a third party that they would not qualify for food and beverage concession. The hotel itself has to be running, has to be managing that restaurant in order to qualify for food and beverage. And so far, proteins like the fancy cheeses, meats and alcoholic beverages. It is a little limited now, but at least that is a start. And this section of the act is administered by Barbados Tourism Investment Inc. And we also have updated section 17 to deal with um, prohibited uses because we don't want to give concessions and then you figure that you could take the concessions and do as you like. So there's a penalty for that and a stiff one I may add. Section 19. Also, the minister has the power to revoke or suspend your tourism status because if you did something contrary to what was approved under section 19 of the act, the minister has the power to either revoke or suspend your tourism status. Also, we have amended in 2014 the second schedule of the act, which is all of so available to you. And as I said before, in this schedule, it is under the subheadings, be it a villa, a restaurant, a hotel, an attraction, a medical facility. And you would see the range of items that each um, entity under the heading can get um, to import or purchase locally a range of items free of duty. And that is it in a nutshell for the Tourism Development Act. If you have any questions, if you have any queries, you can email me at pollardjtourism.gov.bb and I can send you a copy of the 2002 Act and the amendments, um, both of them, the second schedule and also the amendment to the various sections of the Act. I thank you.
And thank you very much, Ms. Pollard. All in all, ladies and gentlemen, information sharing, food for thought, and of course, action and investment. Um, this is a segment where we have a few minutes for questions. And one question that came through earlier on had to do with concessions. Now, Ms. Pollard, you, you did deep dive for us nicely into um, the area of concessions. Um, wondering if you have anything else to add, um, but definitely Mr. Ward, we would love to hear a little bit more about concessions as related to the blue economy. And as I mentioned before, um, well, I really can't tell you about, about concessions uh, from where you sit. Uh, the concessions normally will come from these specific sectors. The one that I would think that would be most um, appropriate uh, to, to follow right now would be uh, the body of work that's ongoing in the uh, with, with with the energy sector, um, and uh, I, I think you can find um, uh, almost all the information that you would require on their website, uh, particularly as they're seeking to to get in, well, implement this entire energy transformation program. Um, but, but the sector, as much as I hope, the tourism is the blue economy sector. And um, you just heard about the concessions and so on related to that sector. Um, I can't define for you all the sectors uh, and, and the concessions that are available. Uh, I know that they're of care among also in agriculture, uh, um, there might be some also in, in, in the fisheries, but I don't have those to hand. What we can do is prob probably uh, do a search for those and ask the question more widely and see if we can get those to you. Of course. And, you know, attendees, you are more than welcome to contact us at Invest Barbados directly. Um, we will post the email address. Um, in the chat, but it's as simple as info, I-N-F-O, at investbarbados.org. Um, and of course, tailored information and guidance to you can and will be provided. Um, Mr. Ward, since you're, you're still on screen, we have another question. Um, you mentioned the green and blue bonds. Can you just very quickly summarize what those are? A blue bond would just be a bond that is uh, attached to any uh, blue economic development initiative. Uh, a green bond would be one that speaks to green economy issues. And it would be an instrument that is used to raise capital uh, for um, some business development opportunity. For example, if someone say that they want to um, get involved in the, um, the, the renewable energy sector, that's the easiest one that, that comes to mind. Um, they could perhaps identify the, 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 the quantum of capital that they require and then seek you know, to get uh, persons uh, to contribute to raising that capital. Um, similarly, uh, it can come from the central bank, but as I understand it, a particular company uh, provided that they have a sufficiently viable business case and meet with all the appropriate approval uh, and have um, the appropriate support from the banks, et cetera, might be able to, to issue a bond um, directly themselves. Uh, I hope I got that right. I'm not a financial expert, but uh, I think those are, uh, are, are the kind of ways that it work. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ward. And of course, persons are invited to contact us. My thanks to my colleague for posting our email address in the chat. Um, let's see a few more questions. Are any of these instruments available at this time or are they potential opportunities? Potential, remember all, all that I spoke about was uh, the development program. Uh, we only um, concluded, well, it's not even quite concluded yet with the, the, the policy framework and action plan uh, was only approved by cabinet last year. Um, uh, that is not to say that um, we have been awaiting that conclusion to move ahead. Um, certainly, we are still open to entertaining uh, proposals um, that would that subscribe to the broad uh, blue economy 
the economy development principles and that uh, are appropriately approved through the um, town and country planning uh, process uh, uh, for, for consideration. Uh, so all those can still come in um, as to whether or not um, things such as that might trigger uh, um, the need for the development of some sort of an incentive or so on. That, that can also be proposed and um, certainly a decision such as that would reside elsewhere, um, the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, et cetera. Um, but I, I can see it being um, once appropriately crafted, uh, being seriously considered uh, given the statements about um, or do economy development aspiration. Awesome, so tailored. Um, Ms. Pollard, you gave a very attractive overview of the very many concessions that are available in the tourism and hospitality sector. If one were to be specifically interested in available projects now, um, you know, for potential investment, where would you direct that person to? Um, when you said for projects, you mean to, if there is a project out there for sale or something like that? Correct. Well, the ministry would direct them to BTII, Barbados Tourism Investment Inc. They're the ones that will deal with that sort of thing because I guess they have a kind of listing that will have projects that are up for sale. While when that is done, if it is under 20 million, we at Tourism will deal with that. Anything over 20 million, the Ministry of Finance will deal with that under CAP 67B. Thank you very much. And asking yes, what I should be... say, we do not go out there. The Ministry does not go out there and look for projects. You have to bring your projects to us because we are looking to give you, providing you are approved project, to give you the, grant you the concessions be it if you're renovating, you're constructing building, or if um, I should mention to, if you are an established um, tourism or tourism related entity, you would not have to go through, we don't have to go through once you are not constructing, renovating. It would be just a matter if you want operational items, you want to um, update your furniture, your appliances, you can skip those two phases and come directly and do the license stage because it's just the operational items, the furniture, the appliances, the safety equipment and so forth. You can bypass once you're not doing any construction, you have a up and running entity, be it a restaurant, hotel, a medical facility. You can come and just apply for those operational items that are listed in the second schedule. If they're not listed, you would have to get an invoice from your supplier and you write to us for a, for a waiver of duties. And the minister has that power once we deem that whatever you want to import that is not listed in the second schedule based on the recommendation you can be issued a letter, a waiver letter that you would not pay um, the customs duties and customs duties under the act is defined as VAT. If you are purchasing locally, you would not pay any VAT. And um, the it also include the import duty and the excise tax. So the definition of a custom duty is import duty, excise duty, and fact, you would be free of. Thank you very much, Ms. You're Pollard. Welcome. And of course, thank you again, Mr. Ward. We're at the top of the hour. So I wish to thank you for your engagement and interest. On your behalf, I thank our CEO and our guest speakers for their time and sharing. And of course, our extended thanks to their respective government ministries represented here today. Should you wish individual guidance concerning investing in Barbados or additional information, please contact us at info at investbarbados.org. One of my colleagues has posted as well the website for barbadostourismainvestment.org.
www.ecofinancialcoach.com. We are on standby to be your guides. And again, remind that a warm and welcoming investment climate awaits in Barbados. As you would have asked, please note that this session has been recorded and would be made available to you via our YouTube channels. You're also invited to stay connected via our social media platforms. These include LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. On behalf of Invest Barbados, I wish you safe and productive days. I thank you.